say every real leader got a lesson in him. Yeah. He do these right here with no effort in him. <laughs> that was 40, go listen to that and just get back. Get back get I'm back, young, gifted, back. and black. <laughs> This past weekend in sports been crazy, man. It's been crazy. The UFC is the rawest thing on television, though. I, I'm, I'm going to keep it G with you. I ain't going to hold you. The UFC is the rawest thing on television. From, from, from Derek Lewis's interview, which was classic, all the way down to Khabib jumping over the, jumping over the octagon just to get the old buddy on the, on the front row. Like, UFC the rawest thing on television. But... The reason I say that is because football then took their little step back as far as no longer being raw, period. I mean, it was 11 roughing the passer flags that was thrown in week five. A couple of them, I could see, you know, why they happened. But still, the fact that the rule is intact is just, I, I, I ain't with that. But, nah, you know, yesterday was cool, though, because my Jets got their second W of the year. And Sam Darnold, I trust. Uh, Carolina and the Giants, it was pretty good, but down the stretch, I ain't, I ain't like how they almost let the clock beat them, to be honest. And the the kicker, my man kicked a 63-yard field goal. Now, his longest at the time was like 59 or 54 or something around there, but I, I just, that was like a, that was one of them, let's try this and see what happens type of wins. They, they really weren't supposed to win that game, but either way it go, it, it was still a good game throughout um the rams though the rams trying to recreate the greatest show on turf because the boys five and oh seattle played real good yesterday even though earl thomas wasn't there the eagles was low-key looking shaky after they lost to minnesota like i, I just i don't know I, I really don't know like that the last touchdown that they got with uh carson wentz the boys went down the field carson wentz and, and zach Ertz. the boys went down the field in 98 seconds and scored now granted I know it's sports, last minute, you know, backsides get tight, that kind of thing. But I don't see how you ain't been doing that all game. Like, just march down the field, 98 seconds, we're going to score the ball. That was crazy. That that was really crazy. And then, speaking of, of losses, though, John Gruden is really proving why he shouldn't have got $10 million per. Because the Raiders are 1-4 right now. And I just, I honestly don't see them digging themselves out of this hole and redeeming any of what we saw this year so far and trying to recreate the magic we even saw last year. Because he, John Gruden is just not it. Like, I highly doubt that he even sticks to his guns and dips out. Because he said, he if, if I don't do good at this, I'm just going to step down. I'm not going to do this. Bro, you ain't doing good at this. So I hope you're ready to step down and walk away from pretty much $100 million. I really hope you're ready to do that. But the two highlight games for me, though, yesterday, if we if we be, we be honest, the Ravens lost to the Browns. The Browns, I, I hate to say, the Browns might be real because, like, they really might be real. Not real in the sense that they're going to go to the Super Bowl or nothing, but they could just put up some numbers and, and dog you out on defense. Like, the Browns might be real this year. But it's it's crazy, though. It, the, the loss is funny because Joe Flacco been playing. he been playing good football, but I feel like the only reason we see in this out of Joe Flacco is because he's trying to keep his job. Lamar Jackson is going to be the future. I mean, I, I ain't no other way around it. He going to be Baltimore's future, and Joe Flacco needs to realize that and just try and take the young brother under his wing and stop trying to just ball out so he can't get a job. I mean, in another two, maybe three years, Joe Flacco, Lamar Jackson got that job, bro. Like, he, he really got that job. But speaking of futures at that, Baker, Baker got a long road ahead. But the young boy looked good under center. I ain't going to lie. He looked good. He looked like he belonged in the NFL. And the fact that he was able to improve morale around that Cleveland locker room. And he turned in the team around. That's that's the big thing. He turned in the team around. And them boys believed they could win. It's, it's one thing to have the talent and, you know, a coach that can kind of put the talent together and it work out good. Because Hugh Jackson, Hugh Jackson, all right, coach. But... What I'm what I'm saying is the team thinks they could win now. 
they went into that game yesterday believing we have a chance, even though the Ravens been red hot, red hot coming into that game. And then there's Dallas. Oh, how about those Cowboys? I said after last season, I said it before this season, I'm going to continue to say it all season. Dak ain't it. He ain't it. Dak ain't it, bro. Nah, nah, Dak. Yeah, Dak. You talking about Dak Prescott? Yeah, uh, uh, Dallas Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback? Dak Prescott? Yeah, Dak. Dak ain't it, bro. He ain't it. Dez wasn't the best receiver anymore. He was the best receiver on their team, but he wasn't one of the best receivers in the league anymore. And Jerry Jones handicapped uh, already an already average quarterback in Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is average at best. He got he got he got some wheels on him. He can get out the pocket, and run a little bit if he need to. He can throw. He can throw a conventional football. He he ain't really gonna throw no deep Aaron Rodgers type of bombs, but he also he he's in the middle of he's in the middle of the pack as far as quarterbacks go. He's like a Alex Smith type. He not gonna win you the game per se, but he ain't gonna lose you the game either. And then at the same time, you look at yesterday. Zeke couldn't get nothing going. The offensive line just, they just, I, I don't i don't know. Clowney and J.J. Watt had a field day with them boys yesterday. But Zeke couldn't get nothing going. He only averaged 2.7 per carry. And at some point, somebody got to say, well, you know, maybe we should try and rely on Dak. You know, maybe maybe Dak could get us, you know, let's, let's throw the ball downfield. Yo, Dak, can you do that? But. You can't do that because Dak's arm will not win you a game. Dak legs probably ain't even gonna win you a game if we be we be a hundred percent honest here. Like Dak Prescott just ain't it. Like that's 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 just how it is. And then you got DeAndre Hopkins. That boy the truth, man. That right, boy the truth. He got Hall of Fame hands and he put forth the effort. That's two things that you cannot teach. You cannot teach a person to have good hands. And to catch a football the way he can catch a football. You can't teach nobody to do that. And you can't teach effort. You cannot teach someone how to put forth effort. You can show someone how to put forth effort. But you can't You can't necessarily or physically teach them how to display effort. That's just something that comes from within inside. And DeAndre Hopkins got that. He got that. And it's going to be fun over the next few years. Bar an injury and, you know, don't nothing happen as far as Nobody getting traded or or just wanting out. It's gonna be fun seeing him and Deshaun Watson hook up for for years to come. That's that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. But switching switching gears just a little bit. The preseason, the preseason been going on for about two ye- two weeks now. The preseason in the NBA, two weeks in. But a couple things I take away from that: the Lakers got a long way to go, and the city. As well as some of us know LeBron lied all summer long and said he was going to L.A. because of basketball and not Hollywood. His lie is going to come back to haunt him because this this is going to be a, I don't want to call it pathetic, but it's going to be a pathetic year. Like Brandon Ingram, it's a lot of hype around him. You know, most improved player possibly this year. Yeah, that's going to be cool, but it's, it's just it. singular accolades is all they're going to get this year. They ain't gonna get nothing else. They ain't gonna get uh, best record in the league. They ain't gonna get number one seeding going into the playoffs. They ain't getting none of that. None of that is coming their way. And I say this as a fan of the player and the team. Carmelo Anthony bamboozled his way. Excuse me. Carmelo Anthony bamboozled us into thinking that he was coming to OKC because he wanted to come, when in actuality, Melo had a plan his entire time. He came to OKC and played like trash. It's low-key what LeBron wanted to do when going to the Lakers, but because he's LeBron, it's just so much hype around it. But LeBron went to LA to take a year off. Melo went to OKC to take a year off. 
I don't believe he really went there thinking that we could win it all. Like some of us did. I don't think that's I don't think he did that at all because he looked hurt. He he looked uninterested last year. Then some of the comments about starting and all of that. Melo didn't really want to be there. And and now that he done got out, the man low key looked like a he looked like a I didn't want to say an all-star, but he looked like an all-star in Houston. He just do. He looked like an all-star now. And I ain't no dummy. I know his reasons why he looked that good in, in Houston and he's starting. I know why he looked good because of the system. But I'm talking right now. Let, let me have my moment because he looked too good in Houston, bro. He looked too good right now. And somebody that comes off of that Carmelo Anthony tree, low-key tried to follow him to every spot he went to until he landed in LeBron James' lap. J.R. Smith don't give a damn about basketball no more. <laughs> J.R. Smith don't care. I ain't never known this man to have a little man complex, but you 6'6", trying to get into it with a 6'10", 7-foot center in Aaron Baines. And Aaron Baines ain't no little dude, man. Aaron Baines ain't no little dude, and Jr. Jr. got in, you know, got locked up and all that arms tangled with him. And when they come out, he pushed the man. Like, come on, Jr. Like he, I mean, it was funny too because Jr. really like blew his chest up. Like he really like, you know, he pushed. It was funny, dog. It was really funny. He 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 really had some heat on his chest and wanted somebody to spark a match. That somebody was Marcus Smart. It was Marcus Smart. He he lit the match. But Jr. went to smiling. Like I understand you trying to be an irritant on the on on the block and all that. You you know you can't really guard Aaron Baines per se, so you're just gonna irritate him. That's cool. But at the same time, you ain't have no y'all locked arms. You know swinging and all that. He kind of threw you around like a rag doll, my nigga, because you giving up size to him. But even with him throwing you around and all that, you don't come out of that and then try and push that man. That's why Marcus Smart did what he did. Now, he got ejected. Them boys had words back and forth. But two things. JR ain't going to exhibit that type of behavior with LeBron James on the team. <laughs> and now that LeBron gone, it ain't nobody that could really check JR and be like, look, don't do that. Don't do Ain't nobody that could do that. You think JR Smith going to listen to Kevin Love? <laughs> if we be for real, like, do that? That didn't even sound right. J.R. Smith gonna listen to Kevin Love. That that just that ain't gonna happen. That just ain't gonna happen. But it's we we getting into the we getting into the thick of of football now. It's it's week five and you know teams it's it's scouting reports out there on all the 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 surprises of this year and it's starting to get good. It's, it's still kind of hard to see who or to say who's going to be what because it's so wide open right now. I mean, the Rams, the only undefeated team right now, everybody else done took a loss or two and in some cases even got a tie. But football getting the way it need to be. The NBA kickoff in eight days. It's going to be a fun time in sports, bro. It's going to be a fun time. UFC still the rawest thing in sports though. Like UFC the rawest thing on TV right now. That's that's just how that goes. But it's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. How to how to how to the, the standings and all that end up in football this year. Can't I keep saying football? Cause I ain't I'm low key not trying to promote the shield. And then basketball. Basketball gonna be good this year too. But uh, you know. I check back in once we get some more. We get a little bit more. I I check back in. I let me know.